In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. I am offering Mass this morning for the repose of the soul of K.K. Kuruvin. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. We pray. Almighty ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the, surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to us. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. 
family, fill your mind with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honour, and everything that can be called virtue or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things that you learn from me and have been taught by me and have, have seen or heard that I do. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus says to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went abroad. When vintage time drew near, he sent his stewards, to, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants. Thrashed one, killed another, and stoned the third. Next, he sent some more servants, this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he says. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? It was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce it through. The gospel of the Lord. St. Matthew seems to love the image of the vineyard. I don't know how many weeks now we've had Jesus telling parables based on a vineyard. This vineyard is the world. Previous, in previous weeks it's been the church. Today it's the entire world. Which is why we hear in the first reading Isaiah singing a song about a friend who has built a vineyard. The friend being God, the vineyard being the world. And so, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the man builds the vineyard and then hires people to take care of it whilst he is away. And then he sends his servants to collect the wine at vintage time. But the people he has hired kill those servants. Those servants are the prophets of the Old Testament. Throughout the Old Testament, God sent prophets into the world to tell the people how to live their lives, to show the people how they had gone wrong in their lives, to tell people what God wants them to hear. And each and every time, the people ignore the prophets. And on a large number of occasions, including Isaiah, they killed the prophets. So the man who runs the vineyard then says, well in that case I'll stop sending my servants and I'll send my son. Because 
because while the tenants may not respect my servants, they will definitely respect my son. He is my heir. He is the one who will take over the vineyard when my time comes. He will become their boss soon. <coughs> but the tenants, the hired people, still kill the son. <coughs> And so God does the same thing. God sends his son. When he realizes the prophets are not being respected, he sends his own son. But not only do they kill the son of God, but they do it in a very public way. He is taken out of the city and he is crucified. But this is what Jesus is teaching in today's parable. He's showing his listeners what will happen to him. He is saying, I am the Son of God, and still you are not going to give me the respect that I deserve. You are still going to treat me as you, your ancestors have treated the prophets. So he asks them straight, what should God do? What should the owner of the vineyard now do that the people he has hired have killed his son? And they say, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and then lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. And Jesus says, yes, absolutely. That is exactly what he will do. The Jewish people are the people of God, the people of the covenant, the people that God has promised to protect for thousands of years. But when you kill his son, he's going to take that promise away from you. And he's going to give it to others. So the reason that Matthew includes this parable in his gospel is because his audience are Gentiles. His audience were not Jews. And at the time, the very early days of the church, there were two camps, there were two groups of people. There were those who said, in order to become a Christian, you must become a Jew first. Because Christianity comes from Judaism. Therefore, you must become a Jew first. And there is another group of people who said, no, it's not necessary to become a Jew first. A Gentile can just be baptized and declare themselves a Christian. And Matthew is in that second camp. And that is the purpose of the parable that Jesus tells is to say, you do not need to become a Jew first. You can just be baptized as a Gentile, Gentile and, be, and be known as a Christian. But 2,000 years later, obviously, we don't need to know that that's not necessary to us. Nobody today is saying you have to become a Jew first. So why does the church say that we need to listen to this parable on this particular Sunday. Because the parable is still important to us. The parable is still important to us to hear. The vineyard still exists. The world is still here. God created the earth. And he has given each and every one of us no matter where we come from, no matter who we are, no matter what our religion, no matter what we believe in, he has given each and every one of us a part to play in taking care of his vineyard, in looking after his world. And so just as the tenants kill the servants and they kill the son, so sometimes 
this still happens in the world today. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus says, when we look at others, we should see him. When we look into the eyes of another person, we should see Christ in them. And so when we look into the eyes of another person and say something negative about them, and do something negative to them, we are doing that to Jesus Christ. Remember, it's also in the Gospel of St. Matthew that Jesus gives us the Beatitudes. That Jesus says to us, God has given us the rules to live by, and so we go by those rules. It's also in the Gospel of St. Matthew that Jesus said, Whatever you do to one of these little ones, you do unto me. So he tells us to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, to shelter the homeless. Because when we see those people, we should see Christ. And so we need to remember each and every day that we are living in the vineyard of the Lord. That he has given us something to do in his name. Find out what our part is in that thing. Whenever we look into the eyes of another person, we see Christ. And we do unto them as we would wish them to do unto us, which again is in the Gospel of St. Matthew. This is Matthew's message throughout his entire Gospel. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule. Because if we don't, then we are like the tenants who kill the prophets and kill the son of God. Do unto others as we would have them do unto us. So now let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all the wicked and the of this I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, the God from God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten of the Holy consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no more. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. My brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, and the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the people, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
12 years. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the moment. Secondary school admissions, it is time for to apply for secondary school. The deadline for applying is the 31st of October. Um, and so on the 21st and 22nd of October, Father Rick and I will be signing school forms. So on the 21st of October, it will be in the car park at Holy Trinity. We will do a drive-through um, um, uh, uh, form signing session. Uh, so just you, you remain in your cars and you drive through and we sign your, uh, we sign your forms and then the uh, staff at St. Anne Mine Junior will be giving instructions and telling you what to do. 
On the 22nd of October, uh, we are signing forms at St. Teresa's Primary School. Um, so both of those are at three o'clock. As always, please make sure all those who need to know this information know it, because after the 22nd of October, if anybody asks me for a school form, the answer will be no. Stewards, you're all very familiar with the stewards now. You see them as, as you come to church, they welcome you, they keep you safe um, uh, whilst you're at mass. Uh, but it's never too late to become a steward. Uh, so if anybody would like to become a steward, uh, they are more than welcome. You must be below the age of 70 and in good health. Uh, so if anybody wants to become a steward, just send me an email uh, at the parish email address and let me know. Over Amigal 2022, as you may know, we were supposed to have a parish pilgrimage to the famous <coughs> Uh, passion play in Oberammergau this year, but it was postponed uh, to 2022. Uh, so the parish uh, pilgrimage to Oberammergau will be the 22nd to the 29th of June 2022. If you would like to come, uh, then go to the parish office uh, where Sarah will give you a form. Finally, uh, Friday just gone was Cathod Harvest Fast Day. Um, and Cathod are helping those who are facing the worst of the coronavirus. We've all felt the impact of this terrible disease, so let's come together to help the poorest and most vulnerable people in the world survive, rebuild and heal. First of all, and most importantly of all, by praying for those who are affected, but also by donating as and how we can. So on your benches, you will find uh, the cathode envelope, which we give out uh, every year. Um, so you can take that home with you, uh, put something in it and bring it back next week, placing it in the wooden box as always. Um, however, then you can also donate online or by text. Um, and next week we will have card machines for cathode. Um, so you can pay by card next weekend if you wish. As always, all this information is in the parish newsletter, which is published every week on the parish website. If you don't have internet access, then call Sarah in the parish office and she can arrange to post a paper one out too. Mary has the parish card machine if you'd like to uh, make a donation to the parish by card today. Uh, otherwise, cash is always in the wooden box. Um, Oh, we have a birthday today, but we're not allowed to sing happy birthday. It's Alex's birthday, so happy birthday, Alex. We would sing if we could, but we can't. But have a wonderful day. Of course, you can sing in the car park. You can stand around Alex in the car park and sing happy birthday to him, okay? Have a wonderful Sunday and a fabulous week, and I will uh, see you again very soon. We stand for the final day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.